Hey peoples! Welcome to another episode of Masala Guitar! As you can hear, my voice is still a little bit kind of shaky. Um, I can't get the high notes anymore! Or I get them in a very, very funny way. Bert! I am back! <laughs> well, firstly, Happy New Year with my own voice rather than a cue card, which, um, if you guys didn't see that video, my silent video, then I'm gonna click, uh, put a link up there so you can click it. And Go watch it and stuff but that was so much fun to do that was such a blast to do and you know I was sitting there and I was thinking well I can't do videos at the moment <laughs> so um it just popped into my head it was like well why don't I just use cue cards anyways you saw that lick at the beginning that nice masala lick man and we're back with masala guitar this year and we're gonna be doing a lot of masala guitar this year because I love doing it um, that was a wonderful, wonderful lick. Now, um, I actually used a slightly different scale to uh, the one that I showed at the beginning of Masala Guitar. If you haven't seen that episode, the first episode, then um, I'll put another link up here so you can go and check out the previous episodes. But this one, I'm actually using the harmonic minor note. Um, so it, it's actually the same pattern. It's just played one string up. So whereas I would play uh, the notes on the high E string, I'm actually playing the, the, the you know, the relevant notes on the B string and etc. Et Anyways, I shall show you how to do this because it is a cool little lick. And um, I'm afraid I don't have the Christmas hat on which I did for the intro when I was actually gonna do this video like, you know, at the end of last year, and then I got sick. <laughs> Anyways, before my voice completely craps out, let me show you how to play this and it is cool. Enjoy! Here we go. Alrighty, so we got this lovely, lovely masala lick. Now, as I explained, um, I'm using a slightly different scale this time. Um, essentially, I'm using a very, very similar shape to the one which I use in the melodic minor. and. Um, you know, I'd encourage you to check out the first episode of um, Masala Guitar where I explained uh, the melodic minor scale. Now I'm playing in the key of D today. And uh, the melodic minor would uh, kind of sound like this. It's a very cool kind of exotic sounding Indian-y sounding scale. Alrighty, so well, I, I used a very very specific interval here on the high E string. I basically stretched over from the 10th fret over to the 14th fret of the high E string. Now that's the change. Essentially um, I'm using a major third instead of a minor third which we usually use in the pentatonic so it's a pentatonic scale. My voice isn't working, it's still not working properly. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> so when I play the pentatonic, I almost played the major third there. <laughs> so this here, when I get to the 13th fret of the high E string, is my third. Now that's the only note I'm changing. Instead of Again, there's my major third, etc. etc. Now, basically, that interval, I'm actually going to move up one string now. So, I'm actually going to play it from the B string. So, instead of playing the 10 and the 13 on the B string, I'm going to play the 10 and the 14. Then, when I come up to the G string, I'm going to play 12 and 10. And on the D string, I'm going to play 12 and 11. And the 12-11 I played when I played the melodic minor, I played it on the G string. So, same shape again. Now what that does, it gives us this. It's a little bit darker. It's a little bit more kind of, you know, sadder in its, um, kind of, in, in its sound. So I switch between these two depending on um, the type of vibe that I am trying to get with the solo that I'm playing. And the note that I'm changing is the seventh. So instead of playing a minor seventh, I'm playing a major seventh this time. Um, so when I play um, the, the scale, 
it kind of sounds like this. And it's got a cool vibe, it's still got that Indian vibe, but that darker kind of sound. So that's essentially what I was using. Alrighty, I'm going to play um, the uh, lick for you first and then I'll break it down. So, here we go. Alrighty, so I'm starting off on the high E string and I'm using my bar, I'm using my whammy bar to actually dip into the note. And the first note I'm going to play is the 10th fret. So I'm actually dipping the bar down first, I'm pressing it down a little bit, and then I'm picking the string. And how I do this is I actually keep my pick a little bit higher, so it's about an inch off the string at the moment. And in order to reach the string, I'm going to use the bar to actually push down. So as I push down, as you can hear that clickety clickety kind of sound, uh, my pick is basically getting to the string. So that's how I essentially do a dip. I make sure that my pick is just higher and I have to dip the bar in order to get to the note. <laughs> there you go. All right, so once I've done that, I'm, gonna, I'm then gonna hammer onto the 13th fret of the E string. And I'm, again, I'm gonna use a dip, so I'm gonna synchronize this. As I hammer down, I'm gonna dip the bar down and then bring it back up, so like this. So that note is also dipped. So that's the 10 and the 13 on the uh, E string. Okay, after that, I'm gonna do a quick trill on the E string. I'm gonna pick up the 10, hammer on to 13, back to the 10. Okay, now I'm gonna come up to the B string, and this time what I'm gonna do is dip into the 14th fret of the B string. And then I'm going to come to the 10th fret of the B. I'm using the bar to do my vibrato thing. Alright, so that first part. And as much as possible, I'm actually using kind of legato, hammer on and pull offs. So even this 14, I actually hammered on, I didn't actually pick it. And when I'm doing that, I'm moving my first finger up to the B string, 10th fret, and then I'm going to pull off to that. And do a dip on the second time I do the 10. Okay, so once I've done that, uh, I'm then going to repeat that first part, that 10 and the 13 on the E string. And this time what I do is I hammer on to the, the 13, and then I do the dip afterwards so that it sounds like two notes. Okay, after this, I'm going to slide up my first finger to the 15th fret. And I'm going to play the 15 and 17. Then I'm going to slide up to the 22, then come back to the 21 and um, do quite a wide vibrato um, with my wang bar. So, like this. And one of the things I did there, if you notice, was I put these two fingers across all the other strings just in order to kind of, you know, quieten everything else down. Otherwise, it's going to be <laughs> low strings ringing out like that. All right. Once I've done that, I'm going to come back to this lick. And then to end with, what I'm going to do is this. So what I'm doing is first I'm picking out the 14th fret of the B and then I'm going to pick out the 10th fret of the B, hammer on to 14, pull back off to, to the 10. Okay, once I've done that, I'm then going to hammer on to the um, 13th fret of the E string. And I think I used my bar for that. 
yeah, I kind of use my bar to kind of just dip down into those notes now and then. Okay, so once I'm at the 13th fret of the E string, I'm going to play that note. Then I'll do the trill on the E string, so it's going to be 10, 13, 10. Back to the 14 on um, the uh, B string. Again, I'm going to do a trill here, so I'm going to pick up the 10, hammer onto 14, and pull back off. So when I add that together, we get that. Alrighty, and then to end with, what I'm going to do is this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my third finger to backslide into the 12th fret of the um, the G string here. And then I'm going to go to the 10th fret of the G. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the 12th fret of the G, pick that and slide to 14. Then from this 14th fret, what I'm going to do is just jump back to the 10th fret of the G string. And I'll end the whole phrase by doing uh, 12, 11, 10 on the D string. And the 11 on the D string is our major 7. So it'll be like this. And that's the end of the lick. So when I add that into context with the uh, G string. And then it slides out. And there you go. There is the whole of that very, 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 very cool masala lick. And uh, next time I see you, hopefully my voice is a little bit better. <laughs> you guys don't mind, do you? <laughs> I'm just glad to be talking here. Anyways, have a fantastic day. Enjoy that. I'm going to show you the playthrough one more time in just a second. In fact, you know what? I'm going to show you the whole track so you can see it in context. Yeah! <laughs> in the meantime have a fantastic day if you haven't done so already please do subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification so that you know when all these cool videos come out and um, you're going to want to do that because i'm probably going to be shooting video at nam yeah i'm going to be at nam in um, about two weeks time i think it is anyways whenever it is um a couple weeks time <laughs> so i'm going to be at nam and um, shoot some video there and hopefully I'll be able to upload it from there so you know I like to do that share, share the experience with you guys so I should do that so click the bell notification as well and also give the video a thumbs up it is much much appreciated and share it with your friends and all of that good stuff and now you can also um, buy my lesson pack which I did with Nick Layton which is just awesome so you guys who want to learn to kind of shred like you're on Sunset Strip, you can go and check that out as well because it is super cool, 30 licks uh, in the style of George Lynch and Warren D. Martini, yeah, which Nick and I have both done. Alrighty guys, have a fantastic day and here's the playthrough, here's the whole playthrough um, so that you can see this lick in the context of the song. Have a great day, have a masala day man, and my voice might be coming back. <laughs> next time bye for now all right have a great day guys see you later